it's April. I actually, I cannot believe how fast this year is going. It's actually, it's kind of scary that we're already in April. I just can't really wrap my head around it. March has been a slow month for reading. I haven't really read very much. I feel like I have been just very, very busy with business and yeah, there's just been a lot going on like business-wise and then also personally, but I thought I would do something a little bit new and usually I don't plan which books I'm going to read ahead of time. I just kind of finish a book and then see what I fancy reading. I have a hell of a lot of books on my TBR. Um, so I just kind of decide what I'm feeling, what I'm in the mood for, and then kind of choose based off of that. However, I thought that in April, I want to have a little bit more structure and just have a little bit more goals for myself in terms of books that I do want to, to read. So I had a look at my shelves and picked a few books that I um, feel are going to be good reads for where I'm at in life right now, um, what's going to be happening throughout April. I have some exciting travel plans. My best friend Cassidy is coming to visit. I'm so, so, so excited for her to be here. Um, but I just feel like spring is here. The clocks moved yesterday. Um, so it's the 1st of April as I'm filming this, but the clocks moved yesterday. It's really starting to feel more like spring. And I just feel like with longer days and better weather, I just, I know that's kind of contrary because usually everyone's like, oh, like if it's rainy, read. But I just feel like with better weather, I feel more like encouraged to pick up books and take books with me and go sit in the park and read. Um, so I'm very, very excited. So I thought I would share the books that I've selected. So I have four that I have chosen for April and I have already started one of these. So I'll just chat you through them and let you know kind of why I decided to choose these. So there is, uh, it isn't really a theme, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go try. So the first one is Erasure by Percival Everett. Now, I haven't ever seen this book or heard of it. And I was in Foils maybe like a month, a month or so ago. And Foils is an incredible bookshop in the UK. Um, it's one of my favorites. And there is an absolutely massive one on Tottenham Court Road. I think it's like six floors. It's just amazing. So this was on their like new, I think it was either on like, new new books or maybe recommendations but either way the cover caught my attention the la review of books said truly brilliant the times said a classic and the wall street journal said a remarkable novel and um i thought the blurb was really interesting because it doesn't really give you very much information at all as to what the novel is about so the blurb is quite short and it says with your book sales at an all-time low, your family falling apart and your agent telling you that you're not black enough, what's an author to do? Thelonious Monk, that's his nickname, Ellison has the answer or does he? So it really doesn't give you very much. But I just thought it was super, super interesting. Um, upon flicking through the novel as well, you have a story within a story, which I always think is really, really fascinating. Um, and I'm about, where am I? Uh, 94 pages in and now I've, I've now gotten into this story within um, the actual book. So um, Thelonious is an author and he um, writes really, really kind of bizarre, um, very thought provoking novels. Um, and he's constantly told that his writing isn't black enough and like his writing should aim to share the black experience. Um, and it doesn't really do that. So he's in a really, really low point. A lot of stuff starts to go wrong in terms of his, his family, his personal life. And he decides to kind of give in to what his publisher has been telling him for years and write this very cliche um, story um, demonstrating the stereotypical quote unquote black experience. And that's kind of the part of the book that I'm up to right now but I'm not really sure what the cover is about yet. Um, and I think the cover is something that really drew me to pick this up. So I'm very, very curious to see like, you know, how this cover fits into the story. Um, 
I'm only about a third in, so I still have some way to go, but so far I'm really, really enjoying this. You can tell it's really, really well written. I really, really enjoy the voice of the narrator Thelonious um, throughout the initial part of the story before we move to the story within the story. So, so far this is going really well, but I'll do a recap once I have actually finished it. So that's the first book. Um, the second book is a story called Minor Detail by Adania Shibley, and this was a winner of an English Pen Award. So my dear friend Hayley recommended this to me. Um, it's a translated work, and the blurb reads as follows. Minor detail begins during the summer of 1949, one year after the war that the Palestinians mourn as the Nakba. The catastrophe that led to the displacement and expulsion of more than 700,000 people and the Israelis celebrate as the War of Independence. Israeli soldiers capture and rape a young Palestinian woman and kill and bury her in the sand. Many years later, a woman in Ramallah becomes fascinated to the point of obsession with this minor detail of history. A haunting meditation on war, violence and memory, minor detail cuts to the heart of the Palestinian experience of dispossession, life under occupation and the persistent difficulty of piecing together a narrative in the face of ongoing erasure and disempowerment. Um, Hayley recommended this and it is something that I am very, very interested in for personal reasons. Um, my grandmother is Palestinian and she was forcibly expelled in 1948, uh, May of 1948. So the Palestinian situation is something that um, has always interested me and is something that I'm very passionate about. And also with the current state of affairs, um, so again, to be blunt, um, the genocide of the Palestinian people under the occupied territory, uh, this is something that I thought was very, um, fitting given what's happening in the world right now um, but I'm very very excited to dig into this um, from what I have I've just flicked through and read a few pages I think it's so far beautifully written but again um, I will update on um, what I think uh, I also uh, everything that I read goes on my goodreads and my story graph and then I obviously well not obviously but I um, rate everything once I have read it. So if you're interested, you can follow me on Storygraph or Goodreads. Um, the second one in keeping with the Palestinian theme is by Susan Abul Hawa, and it's um, a book called Against the Loveless World. Um, Alice Walker said about this book, Susan Abul Hawa possesses the heart of a warrior and it was winner of the Palestinian Book Award as well. Um, and the blurb reads, Nahar sits in an Israeli prison. Many in the world outside call her a terrorist and just as many call her a revolutionary, a hero. But the truth is more complicated. She was named for the river her mother crossed when she fled Israel's invasion of Palestine and grew up into a girl who carried in her bones the desperation of being a refugee. She was a woman who went to Palestine and found books, friends, politics and a purpose. Nahar sits in her cell and tells her story. One of the great powers, beauties of um, literature is that you get to experience other people's experience via their, the stories that are written. So, you know, you may not never have really um, understood what it's like to be living in occupied territory, um, to be expelled from your home, but you can get some form of that experience via the stories that are told through literature. And I think that is incredibly powerful and I think it allows us to develop um, more empathy towards different people and different experiences because if you're like myself and you live in a developed country in the West, then you are very, very far removed from what's going on in other parts of the world, especially if what you consume in terms of news media is you know, from the West. You get a very, very biased picture of the world what happens, who's deemed good, who's deemed bad, um, etc. So I think, you know, fiction is, is just so important and such an incredible tool um, for us as humans to, yeah, continue to develop empathy and to learn about other experiences that are different from our own. So 
I'm really, really excited to read this. Um, I think this was a recommendation that I got from Jack Edwards. And then the last book is a book that was gifted to me by my darling friend Hayley again. Um, and this was during our book advent calendar that we did last year. So this is by Hiromi Kawakami and it is um, called Strange Weather in Tokyo. And the blurb reads, one night when she is drinking alone in a local bar, Tsukiko finds herself sitting next to her former high school teacher. Over the coming months, they share food and drink sake. And as the seasons pass from spring cherry blossom to autumnal mushrooms, Tsutsiko and her teacher come to develop hesitant intimacy, which tilts awkwardly and poignantly towards love. I just think this is really, really interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's just a subject that kind of fascinates me, like the evolution of certain relationships over time and how, you know, at certain points, those relationships are deemed inappropriate or like forbidden. Um, and then as people pass through different stages in life, they become more accepted, but not really. I think depending on what part in the world you are, they're more accepted than others. But I just thought this sounded really, really interesting. Um, and it's a shorter read and I think I've opted for slightly shorter reads this month to try get me back into the habit of reading consistently and enjoying the literature that I'm reading. So um, those are my um, choices. Those are my selections for the month of April. I'm very, very excited to get back into reading. Um, and then I think I will be shifting back to more um, of the classics, specifically more of the Russian classics um, in May, but stay tuned. Um, if you have stayed to the end of this video, thank you so much, sending you lots of love wherever you are in the world. Um, if you are um, an avid reader and you have um, selected books that you're going to be reading in April, let me know. If you haven't, let me know what you're currently reading. Um, I always love reading the comments, so if you do leave one, thank you very much in advance, um, and I will see you in the next one.